So hello, I'm Daniel from Unsloth, and today I'm going to tell you hacks to make LLM training faster. Um, so if you don't know who I am, um, I tweet on Twitter. So if you want to follow my Twitter account, um, that also works. Um, so I like found eight bugs in Gemma. I helped fix them. I also found like some bugs in Llama, Mistral, tokenization issues. Um, yeah, and I love finding bugs. Um, and Technically, Unsoft is a brother team, so my brother's also here if you want to talk to him. Um, we just came from Australia like two months ago, um, and yeah, SF's great. So the famous you know, plot, like everyone knows this image, right? The scaling laws, um, the more you train, the more lower the loss. Um, yeah, so like the question is, how do we make this like, process faster? So I don't know if you saw this image before, but like, you know, GPUs are getting faster and faster. There's more transistors. Um, but like, it's not actually the, G the GPUs itself is getting faster. There's actually methods behind them that make it faster. Oh. So there are like, I'm going to talk about like six different things. Um, the first one is bit representation. So if you want to reduce the bit representation, you can actually make stuff faster and also reduce VRAM. Hardware is also very important. So tensor cores makes the process faster. Um, algorithms is also very important. Um, that makes trading faster. Um, and it doesn't like, you know, reduce accuracy. Kernels, fusing. And high quality data has been recently a hot topic, um, the fine web data set. Um, so yes, that's very useful as well. And I'm also gonna talk about the future as well, what I think like hypothesis and stuff um, that is probably gonna be in the future. So firstly, on bit representation, right? So like in the olden days, everyone just uses float32. Does everyone remember that? Um, so you know, exponent, eight bits, mantissa, um, 23 bits. Generally speaking, this is just a rough estimate a mantissa squared is how many transistors approximately the GPU like will use, right? So like 23 squared, you know, 529 plus eight. So the um, you know the approximate complexity is like 537 transistors, right? It's it's not exact, but like it's around there, right? Float 16 reduced the mantissa a lot. Um, the main the main importance is you need to reduce the mantissa bits because you need to have squared the number of mantissa um, transistors, right? So like float 16 is essentially five times faster than float 32, right? Not two times, it's five because there's, you know, five times less transistors. B float 16 is actually technically faster than float 16, but if you look at the actual numbers for it, like NVIDIA GPUs, AMD GPUs, float 16 and B float 16, the teraflops are like similar. Um, it's still a, I, I'm not sure, like, you know, maybe B, B Flow 16 should have more teraflops, but I'm, but I'm assuming they're like, use the same um, circuits and stuff like that. And it's probably easier to put onto the GPU. Float 8 is also a new, um, you know, measure that people really like now. Um, that, you know, there's like two different formats. There's, you know, four exponent and there's a three, uh, there's a five. And so the transistors are actually different from each. Um, and also there's a new format for the B100s, right? So like the float four. Um, and it's actually not float four. There's actually a scaling factor for each 32 numbers. Um, so that's actually supposedly 180 times less transistors. Um, but it doesn't mean it's 180 times faster, right? So like there's heat, there's other things that's um, there. And also like, you know, 1.58 bit. Um, that's a, you know, everyone's talking about 1.58 bit. Um, and my take is that it's not gonna be that much faster than float four. Um, because the number of mantissa bits is already one, so you can't actually go that much faster anymore. Also, there is like a p physics paper called the Physics of LLMs Part 3.3. I, I think it's from a me uh, the Meta team as well. They show that if you do quantization into int eight, um, you don't lose any accuracy, but if you go to int four, you actually lose two times um, knowledge um, capacity. Um, the trick is, is you have to add LoRa and QLoRa. So when you fine tune using int four, you can then recover all the accuracy. So tensor cores, you know, NVIDIA's tensor cores, they're very useful, um, especially the HMMA and like all the tensor core instructions. They essentially pack, uh, they can do matrix multiplications in the actual GPU, and this reduces overhead a lot. Um, so yes, definitely use the tensor cores. Um, please do not use the P100s, just use the Tesla T4s on Kaggle. This has been a constant question I always get. Tesla T4s on Kaggle are much faster than P100s. Um, Algorithms. So now onto algorithms. So if there are lots of algorithms that you can do to make training faster. For example, if you use SWIGLU, um, if you make d um, deep and thin networks, you can essentially have high accuracy, and, and the number of parameters doesn't change. Um, so there are many methods to make um, you know, training faster as well. Um, I think I tweeted out this recently. Um, depth is necessary for reasoning, and model size matters for knowledge. So the, you know, the deeper your network, the more, the more reasoning it can do, um, you know, quotation reasoning, um, but, but if you make the model larger, you can also like have knowledge capacity. Um, so I tweeted about this as well. Um, and so essentially what this means is you make your model as thin as possible, make it very deep, um, and it can still have the same time, time, time complexity. And it's good for reasoning. 
So for other algorithms, um, GPT-2 plus rope plus no dropout is very useful. Gated MLPs and Swiglu, they're actually very hard to train um, according to the paper. So if you're larger models, it's not that bad. Um, if you use different activation functions, it doesn't really change accuracy. Biases doesn't really do anything. And yes, you definitely must use flash attention. For Unslov, so we actually make training faster as well, fine tuning. Um, we um, something called unsolved gradient checkpointing, um, which essentially offloads the activation to system RAM asynchronously. Um, this only increases um, the you know, time for training by like one to two percent. Um, chunked cross entropy is also very good. Um, chain matrix mul multiplication actually reduces actual flops. Um, it does not reduce accuracy, but you can actually reduce flops if you bracket correctly. So for example, if you use unsolved gradient checkpointing, um, you get like the green line, um, which is your memory usage, and you can essentially make memory usage much decre decreased, and you can do long context fine tuning as well. Character AI released, I don't know if you guys saw the character AI blog, they showed how they like made inference faster, so if you use like multi-query attention, um, you know, one six global attention, plus the rest lighting window, cross layer KV sharing, and also VLLM, you know, everyone should use VLLM, they have prompt caching, prefix, ca prefix caching, um, you know, like Claude said that they have, you know, prefix caching, VLLM already had it, um, and chunked prefill, so definitely use VLLM. For kernels also, you should fuse all the kernels. For example, in Unslop, we do RMS layer norm fusing, rope embedding fusing, fuse LoRa for less flops, swig glue, and also we, um, Torch Compile is fantastic as well. So um, we do that a lot of this in Unslop as well. And also, yes, the recent trend is high quality data, right, the fine web data set. The more high quality data set you can get, the, you know, the faster the training is. Um, so great work for the Hugging Face team from this. Um, so yes, definitely use high quality data. Okay, so for my hypothesis for the future, my view is Float 4 and Float 6 will be actually very hard to train. Um, there was actually research papers to show that Float 6 and Float 4 is a bit complicated to do. Um, we still haven't solved the Float 8 problem, so let's see if we can do that. Um, it probably is possible to train, but it's gonna be hard. Um, also, mo more people will use more sliding window attentions. They would use global attention, but I think that will decrease. People will more shift focus to more data, better high quality data, and also, um, deeper models, so there'll be more layers, um, thinner models, but more layers. Um, and essentially, this doesn't reduce the number of flops. And also, my, this is my hot take, but I think hardware is kind of at its limits. Um, the bit representation was the main driver of performance, and I, like you can go to float two, float one, and then like what's next, float zero? Like that's not correct. So float four is like, you know, the very limits of hardware, um, yeah. And so definitely check us out. We have a GitHub package um, as well. I'm on Twitter. You can definitely talk to me and my brother as well. Um, and yes, we love Llama. We upload all the Llama models. Bits and bytes for bit quantization. I think Tim's next to Bits and bytes, very good. Um, you can reduce, you can make downloads four times faster as well. Um, and yeah, we upload our mo models on Hugging Face. Um, thanks for listening. Yeah. <laughs>